SF was established in 1991 by NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory to be a downlink facility and processing facility for synthetic aperture radar. And so we were established here in Fairbanks at the University of Alaska Fairbanks campus uh, to work with the university in providing that data to the science community. The ASF ground station is really composed of two parts. We have the NASA ground station, which has four large NASA antenna systems. So scientists from around the world use ASF to downlink data and to get access to synthetic aperture radar data. In contrast to that, we also have university antenna systems that ASF owns to operate the, that same type of space communication services for private industry or academia or other government agencies. So the work at ASF over the last maybe decade has been really exciting. The SAR community has changed dramatically over this time span, mostly fueled by the availability of a lot more free and open data sets provided by missions such as the European Sentinel-1 mission and also the upcoming NASA mission, NISAR. This has led to an explosion of the SAR community and really to a diversification of that community and has helped ASF to change from a data provider to a real scientific support agency. We are the archive for all NASA data uh, globally, and Sentinel-1 is our largest data set now. We've got 22 petabytes of SAR data. Uh, most of it is Sentinel data sitting in the cloud in Amazon Web Services cloud. And many people, you know, teachers, students, all kinds of folks uh, are getting access to SAR data now, but it's still very complicated, and so it's our job to make that data easy to understand, easy to search for, and easy to use. With Hype and Open Science Lab, ASF has developed a service ecosystem that allows the science community to offload their most computationally intensive workflows into the cloud or, in, or do their entire scientific workflow in the cloud. Users can avoid time-consuming data downloads and they can execute these computationally intensive workflows uh, in parallel up to a thousand workflows uh, at a time. Open Science Labs are really a really powerful open uh, computing platform. I can use it to develop and scale an algorithm. It lets me have a flexible computing environment, scale my resources up to kind of match the, the algorithm, data processing workflows. And then once I get the workflow locked in, I can move over to what's called high throughput computing with Hype, where we can take that workflow and we can run it thousands to millions of times repeatedly, scale it out to do global uh, processing campaigns. We do a lot of webinars and tutorials, and uh, the NASA's Earth Data program actually has monthly webinars. And we've given a number of those, including on the on-demand RTC. And generally, we get 80% of our attendees tend to be from other countries. Every product package that you download comes with a very detailed readme that goes through each one of the products that's in that package and what it would be used for. There is a lot of ancillary data that's included and so we want to make sure that people know what files are actually useful for them, what they need to be looking at. But then we also develop a lot of story map tutorials, which is a cool way of exploring data in that it can include interactive maps. And so being able to have that interactive content, I think really brings it home to a lot of people, especially those who are new to working with SAR. One of the really cool aspects of SAR is that it's one of the most repeatable data sets uh, there are around because radar carries its own illumination source. When repeated images are made, they actually look the same unless the surface has changed. This has made SAR a really desirable resource for change detection. ASF has collaborated with organizations in the Hindukush Himalaya to build a service called HydroSAR. The Hindukush Himalaya is, is subject to many natural hazards. One of them is annual flooding from the monsoon rains. And so we have partnered with the local governments uh, to use SAR as a resource to provide 24-7 capabilities to monitor our surface water extent. And uh, maybe lastly, we work very strongly with researchers that are monitoring uh, sea ice uh, north of Alaska in, in the Arctic Ocean, and also the large ice caps and how they have changed uh, in the context of climate change. NISAR is a new NASA mission that will be uh, launching hopefully in February, and it is going to pro provide just an incredible wealth of data, uh, not just for those people that are interested in glacier and ice sheet change, but also other disciplines like solid earth and biomass. To add value to the NISAR mission, we really want to be able to just plug it in with the existing record. And that's really where its live shines. It's live 
has built a very large cloud architecture that is able to process large volumes of data. And we do that by synthesizing the vast amount of data that's out there and providing users or researchers with easy to use analysis ready data sets of glacier flow and glacier elevation change and terminus frontal position changes, all the things that glaciologists are interested in. NYSTAR is going to generate 30 to 40 petabytes per year. And so that's why we moved all of our operations from our a data center locally to in the cloud so that people can put their workflows and their computations, their analysis, right there in the cloud next to it and get it as quickly as possible and not have to wait for a download and then wait for their local computer to process it. And we can scale up and scale down as quickly as possible. And so the people that we're bringing in now are super excited about working in that free and open space. And that has uh, really changed the environment at ASF and that has made me excited about all the things we can do to help the science community understand the planet better.